Hello, everybody. This is lessons three and four for the month of November. Uh, we are diving right in with the sacraments of initiation, beginning with baptism. So um, just to review, a sacrament is an efficacious sign. Remember, something that it's a sign that does something. It's not just a nice little symbol. It actually does something. An efficacious sign of God's grace instituted by Christ. We can see where Jesus gave us all of the sacraments of the Bible and entrusted to the church. It's through the church that we receive the sacraments by which divine life is dispensed to us through the work of the Holy Spirit. So the point of the sacraments is to give divine life to us. Why? Because God loves us and he wants us to be one with him. Um, he... He made us. He knows what's going to make us happy, what's going to fulfill us. Um, and his biggest desire is to be uh, one with us and to be loved by us because he loves us. So um, the sacraments of initiation um, is where we begin in lesson three. The, the basic idea of a sacrament of initiation is that we are initiated or drawn into something. And this something is the church and God himself. Okay, so we become a member of the body of Christ, we become one with his church and with Jesus. Um, and as you'll read, when you become part of something, you're also given a job. And our job that we're given is twofold. It is to be holy and to evangelize, right? So our job, once we become Christian, uh, is to be holy as the Father is holy, perfect, right? And uh, the guideline that your book gives, at least for this, is um, to love God and to love your neighbor, right? That pretty much covers it. Loving God, loving your neighbor, okay? Um, and then the other part of the mission is to evangelize, right? Now, we, we kind of don't like this word nowadays, evangelize, because it's a little bit weird or something. The whole point of evangelizing is that we've been giving some, given something that is so awesome that it would be bad to not share it, right? So Jesus, God, becomes human. He becomes one of us so that um, because of our original sin, so that he can pay the price for it, so that we are not destined for hell, but are, are given the opportunity to share divine life with God in heaven forever and always. And um, that's the good news. Right? That's the good news, is that Jesus came and to die for us so that we can be with God. Because without Jesus, we would not be able to be with God. Okay, That is such ground-shaking news that if you weren't to share that with people, you would not be giving them the opportunity to love God. Right, So we're called to show God's love to others. And to um, even take it a step further and try to draw them into the church. Because we believe that through the Catholic Church, um, through Jesus Christ, uh, we can be saved. And we'll be talking about that uh, when we talk about baptism. So, um, I guess we're moving right on to baptism. Okay, so the first sacrament of initiation is baptism. Um pages here. Okay, so a little bit about baptism. Baptism, the word baptize means to plunge, right? So the plunging in water, it, it, it used to be the case, now we pour, but it used to be the case that you would be dunked underwater and um, come back up three times. And the plunging symbolizes death, and the coming back up symbolizes new life, right? So we die with Christ, and we are reborn in the Spirit, Okay. Um, this is foreshadowed in the Old Testament. Um, many, if not all, of the sacraments are foreshadowed in the Old Testament. The reason for this is that the Old Testament tracks God's relationship with the Jewish people. And that is um, God's way of preparing us for Jesus, right? So instead of, you know, a teacher just dumping Hegel on you, first they're going to teach you how to read. First they're going to teach you how to think um, critically. And then only in, in preparing for that sort of thing can you unpack something as dense as Hegel, right? So um, God, through the Old Testament, prepares us for Jesus. 
And we can see that here in, um, in baptism. We are prepared for the idea of baptism. Uh, an example is uh, Noah, right? The story of Noah. Noah uh, listens to God. God tells him that there's going to be a flood, right? And all of the evil that's happening around is going to be washed away. Noah listens. He builds an ark. Sure enough, water comes, washes everything away. Noah is given new life through water. Okay. Another one, the Israelites crossing the Dead Sea, right? Moses brings the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. They go, the, God splits the sea, right? And they walk through the water out of slavery into new life, into the promised land. Okay. Um, baptism is the door to the other sacraments. Without being baptized, you cannot receive the other sacraments. Um... Okay, so each sacrament has uh, both form and matter. Um, and without the form and the matter, the sacrament would not be valid. Remember, um, sacraments do something, right? They're not some arbitrary thing. And so the sacrament is either present, it's either there or it's not, okay? We call this valid or invalid. A sacrament is either valid or invalid, okay? If the form and matter are there, it's valid. It happened. If they are not, it did not happen. You either receive the sacrament or you don't, okay? So um, the form refers to the words that are said. Words are very important in our faith. The form is the words that are said, okay? And the matter is this is also important. The matter is the materials that are used because we're physical beings. God made us that way. So we have form and we have matter, right? The form and the matter both have to be there for the sacrament to be valid. Otherwise, the sacrament is not there. Okay, for example, the form of baptism is the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The form is water. If someone were to baptize with um, coffee, they say the right words, but they don't use water, there wouldn't, the person would not be baptized. Similarly, if you were to use water, but use the wrong words, right? Not use the Trinitarian formula, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, for instance. Um, if you were to say, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, but not include the other persons of the Trinity, it would not be a valid baptism. You would not be baptized. Okay. Um, that's form and matter. Um, okay, so what does baptism do? Remember, every sacrament does something. The first thing that it does is it forgives sins. It forgives all the sins of the person being baptized, including original sin that we got from our first parents. The, what it does not do, however, is it does not erase the effects of original sin. Okay. This is called concupiscence or our inclination to sin. So even though we don't have the, um, the final punishment for the original sin, we're not doomed to hell, uh, we do still have the effects. We still want to sin, unfortunately. So um, it does forgive sin. It also unites us to Christ. We enter into his life, death, and resurrection. This is good news. Even though we're entered into his death, the only way we can be entered into his resurrection, the end of time, the end of our lives, um, is by entering into that death, right? We also are entered into the church. We become members of the, of the church, and we become adopted children of God, right? Jesus is the son of God, and we are entered into Christ, so we become adopted children of God as well. Um, the church does teach that baptism is necessary for salvation. Ooh, what does that mean? It does mean, so in John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus says, unless you're born of the water and the spirit, you will not have eternal life. This is kind of um, combative, maybe, right? Unless you are born of water and the spirit, you will not have eternal life. That's what Jesus said, right? All we have is what he said in the tradition of the church. And if God tells you you should do something, then um, you should probably think about doing it, right? So, um, the only way you could be saved is through Jesus, because he's the one who died for all, um, so that we could be joined to him in eternal life. That is, that's the way it is. That's what happened. So whether you believe in Jesus or not, 
at the end of your life, if you were to be saved, um, it would be through Jesus. Okay. Um, so just because the church teaches that baptism is necessary for salvation does not mean that if you're necessarily, that if you're not baptized, you're definitely going to hell, right? It's not our um, place to begin uh, talking about who is destined for hell, right? We're not focusing on that. We're focusing on trying to get to heaven, right? It's not really useful to go around pointing fingers and saying you're definitely going to hell. Because one, we don't even know that. And two, it's just not helpful. So um, what the church teaches is, yes, baptism is necessary for salvation. Jesus told us to do this. And so we should do what we can to be baptized and to make sure that everyone's baptized because we want everyone to um, be saved. That being said, God is not bound to his own sacraments, right? So God made the sacraments, but um, he isn't bound by them. He doesn't necessarily have to use them. He probably will. Um, but it's in God's power to save someone, even if they were not baptized. The classic example is someone who, uh, you know, lives somewhere where they've never heard of Jesus, right? These places still do exist. It's not their fault they didn't hear about Jesus. It's our fault because we didn't evangelize them, right? But um, they're not necessarily going to go to hell just because they never heard of Jesus, right? Maybe if they had heard of Jesus, they would have um, believed, right, and become baptized. So God is not bound by his own sacraments, but he does give us baptism um, for salvation. So we need to do that. Um, uh, the minister of the sacrament. This is something that we also talk about in terms of the sacraments. There is um, an ordinary minister of the sacrament, the person who is able to... Um, to do the sacrament. In a baptism, the minister of the sacrament could be anyone. This is pretty cool. Um, normally, the minister of the sacrament is a priest or something like that, or bishop, but in the sacrament of baptism, it is possible for anyone to baptize, even an atheist. All that you need is the intent of actually baptizing. That being said, you shouldn't go around baptizing people, right? But this is God set this up this way so that in a case of emergency, if you come upon someone who's dying on the side of the street and they say, I would like to be baptized, you can do that. Um, normally, it's a deacon or a priest that baptizes. Okay. Um, I think that that is about it for baptism right now. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything. Um, I, If you have any questions regarding baptism... Uh, please let me know. Um, and uh, good luck this month teaching your children. I look forward to seeing you all at the November um, gathering and the November Parents Night. We had a lot of fun at our last Parents Night and hopefully more people will come this, this month. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good month.